Why, hello there. It is I, the Cheesy Cat. And we are here with another ARMS video. So, let's get right into it. Now, my previous video was all about ranked here, um, down here. Now, that is part of getting better at the game, but we're gonna start with the basics here. Now, full basics right now, you will want to go over controls, stuff like that, blah, 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 and know what you're doing. And then decide whether you're doing motions control, which is thumbs up grip and actually punching, or you're doing one of the controllers. So you definitely, 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 definitely want to choose what you're doing first. Now, all the controllers, except maybe Joy-Con sideways, are going to be pretty much similar. The only, the only main thing is that each controller is a little different. Um, the controller sideways Joy-Con is different just because of the few different buttons. But nine times out of ten, people already have a Switch Pro controller. People already have Joy-Con grip or just want to play both not even on a grip. You can just play it in handheld mode too. Um, but my main thing is do not switch between motion and controller because that will you'll just mess yourself up. Unless you are good at coordinating those two things, then yeah. I said in my previous video that I switched to controller because when I did my video for that, I was just like, huh, controller is so much better. Definitely don't use punch buttons a and B. Use the punch buttons ZL and ZR in order to punch. It frees up your R, uh, right hand, it frees up your thumb to jump and dash together. You don't have to focus on using your thumb to punch as well because your fingers can and the L and R buttons aren't even used. They're used for, R button is used for rush. So that's basic stuff right here. Obviously if you're using thumbs up grip then practice practice doing it in the test room so i'm gonna show you how to do a quick test room because there's really no way to get a quick test room um the only way that i've been able to do it is to open up a local match create lobby no code blah blah, blah select your character whatever character you want and then press plus and boom you're in the test room so when you're when you're doing the Joy-Con, definitely go into here and warm up a bit. Make sure you know how to move left and right and blah 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 back and forth, and always keep neutral position. Um, neutral position is your Joy-Con's absolutely vertical, where your character is not moving. If your character is not moving, then you're in neutral position, and if you're not in neutral position, you'll have a hard time controlling your character. Um, I've already talked about this in my Joy-Con versus controller video, so go ahead and watch that. I got my cards going on. You probably already saw some um, in previous videos. So yeah. So yeah, charge. Oh wow, my charge shot shot through two of them. That's crazy. So yeah, this is a good place to kind of just train and see what your character does. So you can see here that... Spring Man has a special ability. This little thing around him protects him from any arms that try to come at him. And look at how fast I'm activating it. This is the power of controller. So yeah, don't switch between the two, definitely. Um, now, let's start on the basics. We've been pulling, we've been dragging this on long enough. So punches is one main thing. You always want to punch. Every time you punch, you also build your rush meter. And we'll go about, we'll get into rushes later. Um, now, your second thing that you can do is grab, which is use both punches at the same time. There is a bit of a few frames that you can do w like a super fast punch, but if you go too fast, it'll eventually be a grab. There you go. So, yeah. Bada boom, bada bing. That's how you grab. Now your last thing is guarding. This is going to protect you against punches. 
This will protect you against every punch. You may take 5 damage for a punch though, so that's the only thing you want to watch out for. You can also charge your punches while blocking as well, so it's really good for just charging and not moving at the same time. Because in order to do this, you gotta... You gotta, you can charge your punches with dash, but that's we'll get into that later. So, now I did talk about grabs. If someone is guarding, you can grab them while guarding. Like I said, all their all your punches will be deflected if they're guarding. So if they're guarding a bit too much, you want to throw some grabs to counter that guard. Now if they're punching too much, obviously you're gonna want to guard. And lastly, if they're grabbing too much. One punch will beat a whole grab. So if your th opponent is throwing out a whole grab, you can just throw one punch to break their grab, and that drops their arms to the ground. So a good strategy against constant, constant, constant grabbers is to throw a punch at their grab and instantly throw another punch to hit them. And there's also jump grabbers, which you will want to watch out for. The way to counter jump grabbers is to just dodge out of the way. So if you see them getting close and jumping, one thing I like to do is jump out of their grab and punch them. Because if you do jump, they're going to aim at the ground and you will, they will miss you for sure. So anyways, uh, those are the basics. Punch, grab, and finally block. Now, charging punches is the next thing. Charge punches can be done at the end of a dash, at the end of a jump, and at the end of a guard. Well, not really at the end of the guard. Well, they stay charged when you're staying guarded. So at the end of the jump, boom, end of a dash, and end of a guard, or, well, while guarding. And charge punches have an element. Now, if we go back and we can change our, our fighter, you can press plus and look at each arm that we have so i did unlock a few arms just kind of ignore that for a second each player will have a set three arms um as you can see here so with mechanica my main player that i use well look this is twin tells main three arms you can kind of look up what main three arms they have because that's not going to matter because by the end of this video i'm going to tell you to unlock some arms so anyways we can open up arm and it tells you the name of each arm. You can also set which arms you have, but that doesn't work if you only have three arms for the character. So toaster has the fire lit up. So that means this arm has a fire element. Wind element on this one is a little spiral green thing. And the stun element is that little shock thing. Um, thunder is obviously going to, the thunderbolt is obviously going to be electric. The Blast is explosion, the little snowflake is freeze, and the eyeball is, um, what do you call it? The eyeball is blind. So I'm going to quickly uh, record some footage of all those um, things happening. So attributes, I guess to say. So I'll see you in a moment. Um, so yeah, never mind. I guess the test room isn't really a tra good training thing um but you can edit the rules to like change stuff so you can take items off blah blah, blah and then change hp to infinite so make your rush rush gauge always full how many players stuff like that and then yep yeah, stationary won't move cool that's that's good f that's good for my my little demonstration of all that. So let's get right to it. So here we're gonna beat up on Ribbon Girl with our elementals. So sorry poor Ribbon Girl. We will switch because um, Springman does not have electric attribute the things, but Ribbon Girl does. So anyways, charge your arm and punch with a charge attack. Now, as you can see, she caught on fire. So that is the fire tribute one. Basically, all it does is kind of like, is knockback for the most part. So it cancels out punches, cancels out rush rushes, and we'll talk about canceling out rushes, of course. So yeah, it's just mainly knockback. Knock back. There's no like extra damage. 
but one thing about charged punches is that when you punch, as you can see, it does 90 damage, but when charged, it does 130, so that's 40 extra damage. Now, this isn't the same for every arm. Charged punches won't always do 40 extra damage, and we'll see that as we start going to other arms. So, let's, let's go ahead and do a quick example of everything. Uncharged. Charged. Alrighty, next up is the electric attribute. And we're going to beat up Spring Band right back, right? Let's go. So, electric attribute. Boom, you hit him, and for uh, about a second, your opponent loses control of both of their arms. So, I think this is probably one of the more powerful uh, attributes. Um, it does cancel out, but it's kind of harder to hit. Um, but when it does hit, your opponent is shocked and cannot do anything. Look at that. It's good to head out with a grab or some more punches, indeed. So, do that and then go for a grab. See, look at that. Just enough time to go for a grab. If you're too far, you might not make the grab. But if you're close enough and get that shot, you can get get right into the grab. So, that's, that's just something I like to do with electric attribute things because grabs are probably more powerful than punches but grabs aren't always easy to get so anyways sparky 90 damage charged 90 damage as well so no no difference there <laughs> alrighty next up is the wind element which these boomerangs definitely have so when a uh, opponent gets hit by a wind element they're sent flying Woo! Crazy, huh? <laughs> this is a great way to cancel out rushes um, because the boomerangs actually go around the opponent. And that's actually pretty darn good. And look at how far it sends them. Not only is this good for um, sending opponents flying, but in this stage specifically, since it has those bounce things on the end, you can punch them right into a free rush. Look at that. You you did see that again. Let's let's do that again. And look at that. Look how much damage we're getting. Oh my gosh. It's 360. Pretty good. So yeah, that's just a strategy with the wind element. It's like I said, it's also good at canceling the opponent's rush. So if you're able to dodge right as they activate it and throw that punch out, their rush will be gone. Especially super effective in uh team battles when your teammates getting rushed all you have to do is punch the person who's rushing and boom their their rush is gone and it's amazing to take away an opponent's ability to do 300 to 400 damage on your you and your team so anyways let's get on to showing damage 80 90 so only 10 plus difference for the cooler ranks cool thing i just found out if you accidentally quit your versus settings are saved so i'm happy that's i didn't have to choose everything again so anyways next up we got these try um try bolts here um don't get its name confused for an electric attribute this is actually stun attributes so what stun does is kind of like freezes the opponent for a second so it gives it um it gives you a chance to like do some do some extra stuff here so it kind of does stun them a little bit more so hit stun is kind of a little bit of a thing um, doesn't seem to be very long but hit stun usually isn't long so regularly okay well since we're beating up her beating her up now her arms are fully charged when you hit them they kind of just fall back normally but when you charge that you can see how long they were stunned for. Now, another thing I seem to notice is that the stun attribute actually does m m seems to do more damage to arms. Like, look at that. I, I could just be thinking wrong, but look, it does a lot of damage. It also might be because of these tri bolts. It's three spread out um, shots, so it's able to hit both arms at once. Obviously, it won't stop both arms if they're heavier than the tri bolts, because I believe tri bolts are a light arm. They may be medium, but I'm not sure. Um, but this is how stun works, and it really works for enemy, uh, enemies or opponents who have... Yeah, look at that. I can combo my arms better. Yep. 
and you don't have to throw out both arms all at the same time. So either way, um, stun e element is good for opponents like Master Mummy and Mechanica who have that um, super armor because it will stun them. It won't f make them flinch like it makes most other characters do, but it will stun them freezing their movements for a little bit. So that's a pretty cool thing. Stunning is good, slows how many t punches your enemies do. And if stunning really does damage arms better than other attributes, then that's something else to do. I'd have to, I'd have to look up on that. So anyways, Tri-Bolt specifically does 70, but when charged, does 110. So plus 40. On to the next element. Now before I get to the next element, We've noticed we got Ninjara here that I have to do next because he has the next element we're doing. There's a few arms that don't have an element at all. Now, I think these kind of arms actually get up. They're really big arms, so they punch through a lot of things. I don't think they punch through heavy stuff. But when charged, um, they get bigger. Um, so, I mean, that's not really so much to describe but it's because it's pretty much straightforward when you charge them they get bigger <laughs> it's, it's really silly but it does help when blocking some punches as well but anyways let's get on to the next element the explosion element i guess you could say blast element all right the tri blasts here have an explosive element i like to call it the blast element because i play monster hunter <laughs> so anyways Bada boom, look at that. So it looks like it does one punch and then explodes. This is really good for players who aren't good at expecting that. So when you get hit by a blast element and you block the first shot and let go of your guard, that blast will still get you. So make sure you hold your guard against the blast as well as the regular punch. Um, so like basically, um punch and explode so they not a charged up attack um it's more like a two shot attack 70 and then 50 which actually totals up to 120 damage so that's pretty powerful um now think i one thing i want to get into is that if you're too close to your explosive element arms um when they explode they will blow up on you as well so be careful with that now these tri blasts they don't really explode don't have a really huge explosion radius but there's some arms that have an incredibly huge explosion radius like the homie and if you get hit by your own homie you'll be sent flying like you got blasted so bada boom sends them send some knockback to going so the two the two shot kind of thing is really cool it also catch opponents who dodge into it so basically miss the shot you miss the punch but they still get exploded like that so it still does 50 damage without that and yeah that's pretty much the blast the blast arms all right in order to get the next element i had to choose twin tail so yeah the next element is ice so boom when your teammate is frozen, well, when your teammate, when your opponent is frozen, they won't be able to move. So, move, well, they still can move, but it will be like your arms are disabled and you can only move at that pace. You can still punch, though. Um, let me switch up some things so we can see that. Come on, let me just freeze you, buddy. There you go. Now, as you can see, she can barely move. There you go. And like I s just showed, she can still punch. But yeah, you'll see, you'll see that she won't be able to move as much when she's frozen. So that's basically what that does. It opens up grabs a little bit, but not as much as shock does because shock, well, electricity will absolutely disable their arm. Freeze just makes them can't move at all. So they'll have to punch in order to do anything. Oh, uh, I did not mean to do that. So yeah, just kind of watch what your opponent will do and you will pretty much be able to do it. Best way is probably to block and then try to get them to grab or to punch and then either if they punch, advance through their punch or just punch their grab and then punch with your other arm for some free damage. 
Or that's freezing them is also a good way to do a rush, so you force them to punch and then get a rush going out. Now this last attribute um, is mostly kind of, I think it is unique to Helix, well at first. Once you start get playing the arms getter, which I'll do a video on, you will want to um, unlock everyone's arms and eventually everyone will have all arms and you can use any character with what arms you want. Now, this right here, the blorbs are the ones with the charge that has the blind element. When you punch, they'll be, they'll basically be, have a big old blue thing on their head. Um, but I can't show what that looks like to the player on screen. Their screen is going to be covered in a blue goop. So I'll be right back to show you guys what that looks like. Um, oh wow, we didn't want to dodge the blorb. We're going to try to dodge a dragon to get blorbed. So that's what blorb looks like on your screen. So knowing all these attributes, you kind of want to use them to your advantage. Um, take the tips that I said about those specific attributes. I want to say that wind and... Um, electric are the most powerful ones and then fire and blast are probably like next up well freeze is kind of I want to say on the same level as probably fire and blast um, explosive because I mean you can still punch while frozen and I think there's people out there that don't really understand to punch because they always get um, you can actually lock people into frozen by waiting until their ice basically their frozenness is ended and then freeze them again so this is really powerful with the ice dragons because in order to punch the dragons down you have to be close enough to punch the actual dragons themselves plus on top of that they're a heavy arm so yeah <laughs> so anyways um take all those into account to select what arms you want um basically from here on out you're going to want to choose a character that you want to get used to their abilities. Now you saw ability, all the abilities in the... I'm not, not, not four player, please. No, not again. You saw all the player abilities in the previous um, videos about arms and the test fires and all that stuff. So you should know that Springman can deflect punches when he charges up a dash and he drops if he drops down to 25 percent he goes into always charge arms mode which is a good for comebacks ribbon girl can jump four times in the air um i don't think she has any other cool aspects of god or other well she is fast so yeah watch out for that ninjara can block and dash to disappear through punches and all kinds of stuff so his guard advance and all of that will make him disappear so you won't know which spot he's going to pop up into until he's already popped up there next up is master mummy who has super armor which means that he won't flinch when he gets punched by anything but charge punches charge punches will always do their charge effect um on uh, every character even if they have super armor and on top of that if he blocks he heals 10 hp per second and i believe that gets either faster or more powerful as he guards for longer um, Min Min can kick away arms when she dashes in any direction, um, well, in the air, and dashing backwards, of course, so that's pretty cool. And when she charges up her dash, her right, uh, her left arm turns into a dragon arm, which means that it'll always be charged until she gets knocked knock back, which is usually by grab or by a charged arm like blast or fire or wind even geez that wind element though mechanica is in a machine she doesn't have actual stretchy arms herself so she can float around on the machine so she can stay jumped which also keeps her arms charged in the air which is pretty useful um she can also keep moving while keep a quick momentum while dashing because of those rocket rockets on her back and then the last thing is she has super armor as well as Master Mummy does. So she won't feel it unless it's a charged punch. Next up, Twintel can actually dash into air and slow down time. So yeah, it gives you a few extra seconds to see what the opponent is doing when they're punching. So mainly slow down punches, not the 
player themselves, I believe. So it's pretty good, pretty good player here too. She also is good at mobility. Bite and Bark um, is a weird combo. You have your arms person, who is a robot, I guess. And then you have Bark, who is a sidekick who can actually throw a punch. And his punch is, um, I believe, just a regular toaster, no matter what you pick. So yeah, Bark can punch randomly. And not only that, Bite can jump on top of Bark to bounce even higher. And then you can even stay on top of Bark to keep on bouncing and bouncing, bouncing, and kind of trick the player into doing random stuff. So that's pretty cool for Bite and Bark. Um, kind of like three arms instead of one, but you can't control Bark. He kind of just follows you around. Next up is Kid Cobra, who has like the fastest dash. Well, actually not only that, the longest dash in the game. And he is fast as heck. Oh my gosh. Like just dashing all over the place like crazy. Um, I think that's his main perk. If I did miss anything, please feel free to say so. But I believe his dash is just longer than everyone else's. Um... I haven't seen him do anything special, so yeah. Next up is Helix, who is like the weirdest character of all, and he can actually like duck and stay ducked and be harder to hit. So he can minimize his hitbox to avoid punches, and he can also become really tall. If you hold the jump button, you'll become really tall, and like you can move left to right really quickly or just to avoid punches altogether. Um, so he's he plays differently, but if if someone is able to master Helix, I think he can kick very major butt um, with his weird little dashes and stuff like that. Also, when he's stretched up tall, his punches will always be charged. So that's another cool thing to take in account. And yeah, that's all the characters. So go ahead and pick your character, get used to their mobility options, their abilities that they have, and take advantage of them. Yeah, that pick your character, get used to their abilities, and go on from there. Take all the tips in this video and select your arms, and in the next video, I'll talk about getting more arms, which will definitely help you in creating your perfect character for your playstyle. So anyways, this is the end of the video. If you liked it, obviously hit that thumbs up. Comment below if you have any other suggestions, anything that you'd like me to go over in probably the next video about getting better in ARMS, of course. Um, trying to make these videos short, so I'm gonna have multiple parts for them. And yeah, we have a lot of stuff to help you become a better player at arms. So anyways, this is the end of the video. If you liked it, hit that like button below. Give this video some love with a thumbs up. Comment below, like I said, if you have any suggestions or anything that you want me to go over. I do have a bunch of videos coming out, so I may have thought of it already. I'll still like your comments and of course keep this going on if i haven't done it yet then thank you for commenting that lastly subscribe to the channel obviously i have a bunch more videos coming out for this and um yeah i'll get some actual match videos going on next um so that you're not just watching me talk about the game you're gonna watch me play the game i've been saving ranked match just for this um for my series on ranked match which is not going to be anything special it's just me playing ranked match and ranking up or down so yeah it'll be like c minus s plus on splatoon but for arms and i'm not gonna make um extra accounts or change my rank in order to do that so yeah this is the Cheesy Cat, and I will see you in the next video.